Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shauna from Created and Made, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make your own DIY alcohol inks from things you probably already have in your stash. Now, I'm going to test out several different recipes. Some were more successful than others, but I'll show you guys how I came up with my best recipe that I used to make this beautiful print here and I'll tell you about my less successful ones and let you make up your own minds you might still like them so stay tuned okay so let's go ahead and get started with the marker method now a couple of things to note I have this set of markers. It is one I got for my kids. It came with 80 in a set and it was in the $25 range. I checked on Amazon and it's no longer available, but I saw one that was $22 for 80 um, markers. And these are alcohol markers. They are permanent markers, the same kind of ink that you'd find in a Sharpie or Copic. I mean, the same type, not the same quality. Um, but yeah this is alcohol based ink now that's what you want to go with when you're doing this process i mean you can use water-based inks such as crayola or what have you but well i'll talk about it a little bit more later in the video as well but the reason you don't want to do that is that what you end up with won't be permanent we know alcohol inks alcohol inks are permanent when they're dry meaning they're waterproof and if you use crayolas or any other type of markers other than alcohol based then what you end up with won't be waterproof but you know that's the thing if you if you don't mind that then so have it but the ones i'm going to be using are alcohol based now when you think about the price of these, 20 in the $20 range for 80 markers, you're looking at about 25 cents per marker. So I don't feel too terribly about taking these apart. Now, this is an older set, so you know, uh, be that as it may. But what I'm going in with is, this is just a regular old palette knife, and you just wanna find the seam in the markers. Now, I know that these have a seam here and you just want to wedge whatever tool that you're using into the seam so that the marker will the tip part will come away from the base of the marker I got the base away from this tip. And so what you wanna do is you just wanna pull out this part here, the tube. And put that to the side. Now I'm also gonna pull out the tips because those will hold ink as well. And this particular brand of markers have two, si two tips. So you just wanna pull both of those out. Now I have here, I think this is a three ounce plastic cup and I am going to put some isopropyl alcohol in the cup like this is 99.9% .9 isopropyl and that is also it's it's important it's not as important but I would use 99% or 91% when you're working with alcohol based markers like this simply because the 99 and 91% alcohol have less water content. So you're just getting more alcohol. And I put the tips in there. And what you wanna do also is, I'm going to just stick this tube in. And it will, I don't know if you can see that there. It's immediately turning white. It's starting to leach the color out into the alcohol. And what you wanna do is you just wanna put this aside and let it do the leaching process. The ink that's in this tube will come out of the tube, leach out into the alcohol, and what you'll end up with is alcohol with this color mixed in. So you wanna put this aside. I mean, I did it 
at least at least three or four hours give it a chance to really get all of that in gout I've also done it overnight and what you want to you know pay attention to though is the evaporation now if you do it overnight you can always cut this in half and put both pieces down in there and then put a cover over the cup to slow down the evaporation process um, I don't it doesn't really bother me. I think what I have in here, the amount of alcohol I have in here is plenty for the containers that I'm going to be putting it in. So if I get some evaporation, it really doesn't matter to me. It won't disappear. You know, there'll still be some left. There'll be plenty left. But if you're concerned about that, you can do something about it. Now that was the yellow one. I'm going to do two more. This is vivid pink and royal blue. Now with this last one, I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna try cutting the tube in half. I've seen videos where people did it that way and they said, you know, it, it worked faster for them, the leaching process. So I'm going to try that, get the tube cut open to see if that'll help us get more of the ink out or get more of the ink out quicker. have a little exacto let's see what that will do I mean is this plastic it seems like it's can easily be cut yeah let's see. Let this cut open expose this fabric-y stuff here. You know, I, I'm going to cut this in half, too. Let's see what that does for our process as well. So that's our three marker colors that we, I was going to demonstrate. We'll let these do what they're doing, let the ink leach out, and when it's all kind of set up, I'll show you guys what it looks like in use. But for the time being, let's take a look at a different method. Okay, so the next method to make some alcohol inks is using archival ink reinkers and our 99% isopropyl. Now these are, our archival inks are solvent based. So when you use these, you're gonna end up with something that is waterproof like we talked about before. So that's why they're a good option. They can, um, they might need to sit a little bit longer to fully sort of dissolve. Otherwise, you'll end up with a little bit of grit at the bottom. But uh, the ones that I've tried have worked out just fine anyway. Now, what we have is here are, these are 10 milliliter bottles that have a precision tip that looks like this. I don't know if you guys can see that. It looks like that. And it, they also come with these little mini funnels. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour the ink directly in the bottles and the isopropyl mix in with it. So I actually went ahead and put my 99% isopropyl in this little bottle just so I'd have a little more control over the pour. I mean, you can do it however you'd like. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill this about three quarters of the way with isopropyl using my tiny little funnel here. Now that 
that I have the isopropyl in there, I am going to go ahead. You know what? These funnels may not truly be necessary. I don't know. I'm going to try it because these have a, a pretty precision tip on them. So it might not be necessary to dirty up these funnels. Yeah, I'm not going to use the funnel. So I'm just going to take these out and I'm going to put about 10 to 12 drops of this archival ink in with the isopropyl. Yeah, I ended up being closer to 15. Um, but as you can see, I don't know, I don't want to turn it too far over. It'll spill all over. But the the reinker is has settled at the bottom, and I'll need to shake it up a little bit and then let it work itself in with the isopropyl. So I'm gonna put my little these these bottles come with these little lid things screw on my tip close this up so I don't have ink flying everywhere and then we're gonna give it a shake now you can see it looks a lot more uniform and I don't believe that too much of this will settle back out we'll check it but I had some good luck with using these reinkers before and it, it didn't end up with um, the ink sitting at the bottom. So I'll put that off to the side and let's get our other two colors going. I went, this is Vermilion is the name of this color. It is a dark orangey red. I'm gonna do Garden Patina and a Deep Purple. Okay, the last group I'm gonna show you are a set of acrylic products. Now, what I, what I have here is Liquid Acrylic by Dr. P.H. Martins, Dina Wakely gloss, gloss Sprays, which are acrylic based, Distress Acrylic Paint, and this last one is Liquitex Acrylic Ink. Now, Acrylic and isopropyl alcohol are not natural bedfellows. They don't normally work well together. And some of these can get a little hinky in that they can break sometimes. But we'll check it out. We'll see how it works. Um, and we'll see if we like how these turn out. So I'm going to start with the Spectralite in this chrome yellow color. And I'm just going to go right into the bottle with it since it has a dropper now I'm just I'm roughly gonna be going maybe one part ink to three parts alcohol and for this one I am using I'm still using the 99% isopropyl only one of these the distress I'm gonna switch to 70% because it has 70% has more water content in the distress um, products, you know, they like water, even the acrylic paint. It works well, it activates with water. Um, I think that's going to be enough. I mean, that's maybe a quarter of an inch. <laughs> that's, an, that's not a great measurement to give you, but you, you'll get a sense for, you know, how much ink you want to put. I mean, obviously the more ink you put the stronger the color will be but you have to be careful because if you put too much ink not enough alcohol then it won't behave like an alcohol ink in any way so I'm going to go in here with the 99 percent
and you can kind of see that the ink is or uh, whatever this is the liquid acrylic is sitting at the bottom and this will need to be shaken up much like the reinkers that we just saw so i'll put the cap on here and get this shaken up all right the next one is dealing with the gloss sprays and these need to be shaken up rather well i'm actually going to mix this in this little cup here because it will need to be sort of stirred and I'm not going to spray this out. I'm going to pour it out. So that's why I'm off. another reason why I'm using this little cup. So this is just a little silicone tipped thing that I own. <laughs> I think it's a paint remover maybe. I'm just going to use it to mix this up. And I'll use my tiny funnel to get it into the bottle. Now, if you try this and you notice that it's a little syrupy sort of in texture, you should probably add some more alcohol. That's what I found worked when I tried this before. It really shouldn't be syrupy because that just means you have a little too much gloss spray and not enough alcohol. Okay, so I'm actually going to use this another little cup for the distress. Just give it a shake. I'm really just putting maybe a quarter of an inch in the bottom of this little cup. I don't know if you can see how much that is. But then I'm going to go in with this 70% isopropyl and fill it up to the top. And I want to give this a mix. So there's that, and the last one is the Lubitex acrylic ink in quinacridone, quinacridone magenta. I always feel like I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, it has a dropper, so I'm just gonna go right in to the bottle. Now I'm switching back to my 99%. Okay. We'll put 
put those aside for the time being and let's check on our marker stuff this is the blue and that you can see how well that has leached out there it's a really brilliant color this is the yellow you know looks pretty orange and this is the pink that looks pink but also looks kind of orange these look a lot more translucent and i'm wondering if that it has anything to do with the fact that i cut this one open and i didn't cut these open so i'm gonna get these ready these have been sitting for about yeah, seven hours or so so I, I feel like that's plenty of time and they're ready to go get my gloves together now what you want to do this is the messy part you want to kind of wring out the tube and make sure that you squeeze all of the alcohol ink lick just all of the liquid out of the tube and into the cup now it wants to come out of both sides so that's you got to be a little careful or it'll come sort of like erupting out of the top um and that is a mess <laughs> this will stain your hands and your surfaces but it's generally cleanable with some isopropyl so I don't know about the hands. The hands might take a little longer to get clean, but your surfaces can be cleaned with isopropyl usually. Or uh, and some hand sanitizer is what I, I like to use. Yeah, be careful you don't knock the cup over like I almost just did. That would have been such a fail. Now, if I had this to do over again, I probably would have used less alcohol because I feel like this color is probably going to be really translucent. But, you know, we're just figuring this out. So I'm gonna, I feel like that one's pretty dry. I'm gonna put that off to the side and do the other two. Okay, I think these are ready to go into the bottles. I've gotten some bottles that are a little larger than the ones we were using. I think these are 10 milliliters. I think these might be 30. I'll drop a link in the description to where you can get all of these bottles. So, I'm just going to use my funnels and this is the, wow, I mean this pink and this yellow look really similar in the cup. So we'll see how they look on the paper. Okay, so let's go ahead and give these alcohol inks that we have made a test run. Let's see what they would look like in practice. Let's start with the ones that we made with our alcohol markers. We have our yellow here, our pink, and our blue. And this is a four by six inch piece of uh, white graphics craft plastic. I'm just going to put all three colors here on the same sheet. Now, what you want to look for right away is how do these inks move? We know that alcohol inks move around. That's what they do. That's what they're known for. They move well and they move oftentimes on their own. So as we see with these inks here, they are moving quite well. You put them out on the craft plastic and they just start to spread. And I'm just going to give them a little bit of help here with my blower and see how they blend and move around on this plastic. Now, this these three inks seem to be moving beautifully. If I stop blowing and just watch them, they continue to move on their own. They are blending and forming new colors. We have this orange here. There's a beautiful purple here forming. And so I think these three inks and this method using the markers and the 99% isopropyl will produce some great results. Okay, next up, we want to take a look at the inks we made with our archival reinkers. Now, these three colors are not the greatest combination. I will probably make brown at some point here, but it's fine. Let's just get them on the paper and see how they move. 
And right away, you can see that it's starting to bloom and move on its own. That is a great sign. Let's get some of this. This one was Garden Patina. This is the Vermilion. It is starting to spread and bloom on its own. These all look like they will do quite well as far as their viability for using as alcohol inks. They are blending, getting some new colors as before. Now, the inks also push one another, and that's something you also want to see when you're trying to test an alcohol ink to see if it's a, it's a good recipe. So another thing you want to take a look at is how it responds to blending solution. Blending solution should push some of this ink around. It should lift. You should have um, uh, less ink here where you dropped the blending solution because it is lifting. So these are all great signs. I think the re-inkers will do quite well for use with alcohol inks. Okay, so let's go ahead and test out these Dana Wakely gloss sprays as alcohol inks. Now this is I, one I did off camera is the color night and this is the color lime and so let's get these on the paper and see how they move. Okay that one looks good. Let's try this one. You know this one just right off the bat looks thicker. It looks more like ink. It, it, it looks like maybe it could benefit from more alcohol in the recipe. Now, I mean, that may just be a function of the fact that I wasn't measuring, you know, I was just kind of eyeballing things. And you can tell just by the way these two are interacting that this one has is much more viscous than this night color is. But, you know, I, I, this isn't... I don't dislike this. It doesn't move as fluidly as alcohol ink um, that you'd buy in the store would because it's made from acrylic, obviously. So, I mean, it has different properties, but I think it's, it's, it's still looking beautiful to me. These colors are not fully blending, but they seem to have some layering effects going on. And so, Although this doesn't behave like you would expect an alcohol ink would, and I might have to tweak the recipe a little bit, I think that these still have possibilities because just like the gloss sprays in, you know, their, their usual use have a very interesting and unique look to them, I feel like as an alcohol ink that it could have that same interesting look. And so... I can see myself putting these to use. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Distress um, Acrylic Paint as an alcohol ink. Now, just like the gloss sprays, you might wanna check the bottom to see if there's any settling. This has that white, you know that white substance that acrylic inks can have at, at their bottoms. Um, this has a little bit of that, so just give it a shake. This is the color, this is the color I did on camera. It's Hickory Smoke and this is one I did off camera. It is Mermaid Lagoon. And just like the Dina Wakely sprays, you can tell going on that it has a little more viscosity. It's a little thicker. But let's see how it blows out. Yeah, that is not bad at all. I mean, it does have some good movement, some good interaction, and when I stop blowing, it continues to move. That's also a good sign, as I mentioned before, that it is functioning like an alcohol ink would. That looks great. I mean, we've got some blending, some movement. Let's see how it um, reacts to a drop of blending solution. 
Oh yeah, yeah. That is acting as I would expect an alcohol ink would. Now what I'm not seeing, which is good, is a breaking of the color. Sometimes acrylic, when you use it with isopropyl, will sort of want to disintegrate and leave a sort of gritty texture appearance behind. And I've seen that when I've tried this technique before, but, but these look like they are holding up, the color is not broken, and I think this recipe will be a keeper. The last set we want to look at is the liquid acrylic, the PH Martin, and this other one is uh, the acrylic ink, the Liquitex acrylic ink. Now, I noticed earlier, I already shook it up, but I noticed earlier that these had completely settled. So with this liquid acrylic, you want to give it a shake and make sure that it is all back integrated with that alcohol. So let's go ahead and, and get this on the paper. This is a color that I did off camera, I believe. I don't know what it's called. I think it's ruby red. And this was the one I did with you guys. And I think it is showing some, some solid movement. It's not just stagnant and viscous, but I do see the beginnings of what looks like a color. The, this red is, looks like it's breaking a little bit. And again, just by breaking, I just mean the color seems to be um, breaking down. And it'll leave sort of a textured, rough, gritty appearance. Now, these blow out pretty well. I do see some grit forming here, which really just tells me that this particular product didn't integrate well with the isopropyl. But it is moving around. It does move around and it is interacting with, with the two colors are interacting and they're pushing, which is, you know, a good sign. That's what an alcohol ink would do. This Liquitex color, it's one, it's beautiful. And two, it seems to be blowing out um, a lot better than the PH Martin. So that's, that's something you might keep in mind. Like you might have different brands of, of similar products and one brand might work, whereas another brand might not work as well. So I think the liquid uh, acrylic and the acrylic ink have strong potential. You have to find a good recipe and a good brand because otherwise you might get an acrylic that wants to break and wants to behave poorly, like not blend, just break down. But if you have the, the right the right brand and, and you're able to make it work, then this is a very viable option. Okay, so finally I wanna to touch on whether the techniques I've been showing you guys will work with your water-based medium. So water-based is gonna be your stuff, like your distress, your dilutions, liquid watercolor, food coloring, stuff like that. And the answer is yes and no. There are some caveats, there are some pros and cons, so let's take a look. First things first, I just want to rule this out and let you guys know why I'm not even trying the liquid writ. There are a lot of YouTube videos of people using liquid writ and it just didn't work very well for me. The liquid writ or the powdered writ, the powdered tie-dye powder, stuff like that, didn't work very well for me. There's something in this probably soda ash or the salt or whatever it is that does not dissolve fully in alcohol so you end up with a gritty final product that I didn't love so I'm not going to be showing you guys that uh, that particular concoction now the second thing you want to note is that I've been using a lot of 99% isopropyl and with some of these that just won't work at all like this is uh, food coloring it mixed with 99% isopropyl and that is just a undissolved blob of nasty. I don't know what it is about the food coloring. It just did not like the 99% isopropyl because these are water-based. They often like uh, alcohol that has a higher water content. So I use 70% isopropyl with all of these. And finally, something to note is that 
The final product for these will not be waterproof. Adding isopropyl to them does not change them into a permanent medium like an alcohol ink would be. So, I mean, that might be a deal breaker for you. A lot of people like to work on top of alcohol ink backgrounds and with something that will re-wet with water, that's not fully possible. So I'm going to show you the six I mixed up and let you guys come to your own conclusions. I'm going to start with dilutions. I'm going to do two on each sheet so you can see how they move around and mix. This is dilutions and Dick Blick brand liquid watercolor. Okay, so as you saw, we were able to use our water-based alcohol inks. I use that term loosely, but we were able to use them, and they they worked very well, pretty well, I would say. Like, they combined well, they moved around, we got some beautiful new colors forming, and I think at the end, it's a very viable option. The thing is, and let me know in the comments if this is a deal breaker for you, because in some in some situations it, it can be, in some situations it's not. Whether the fact that these will re-wet with water, is that a deal breaker? Is it, you know, not worth actually making these because of that? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. So another thing you noticed about these is that they, they dried down a lot duller than they went on. And that's just how these operate for for whatever reason the alcohol evaporates super fast and what's left just looks a little duller as it dries now to get a more vibrant look i i you can also use a gessoed piece of this is a gessoed piece of watercolor and they they came off a lot more brilliant on this substrate so that was fine. I think that that worked out better even than I was imagining. But in the scheme of things, how do the water-based inks compare with everything else that we did? Well, I think I've had to rank them. The ones that did the best today were the alcohol markers and the archival reinkers, And that makes sense because these are both solvent based items to begin with so it makes sense that they would operate in the realm of alcohol inks which are solvent based um, a lot better than these other ones that are not solvent based i mean acrylic and water based they don't naturally perform as alcohol inks so i think as far as performance goes as far as you know the best bet for making your own diy inks the markers and the reinkers are the way to go. And personally, if it were me, you get the best bang for your buck using the alcohol ink markers because they can be had very inexpensively and they they create a ton of ink. Like this is one marker, this is a lot of ink. And that ink will last you for, for who knows, for forever. It will last a very long time. So I'm actually gonna take the three marker based colors that I made and use them to do a quick little project so you can see how they would be used in a piece of artwork. Stay tuned.
I think that came out beautifully and it showed you just how well these marker based alcohol inks will work and I hope you guys enjoyed that if you did please go ahead and leave a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button it really helps me out I hope to see you guys next time in the meantime have a creative day bye bye